Greetings, everybody. Turn your Bible to King James, your King James Bible to Luke chapter 16. Somebody asked me about this. So I thought, okay, I'll make a short Bible study out of it. Uh, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All right. Verse 16. Now, I'm not sure I've got a perfect interpretation of this, but I'm going to give it a shot. Luke 16, verse 1. And he, Jesus, and he said also unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. So basically, you know, you're talking a rich man. Uh, if he had a business, it would be his business manager, the manager of his business. But he was uh, wasting his money and wasting his goods, right? Verse 2. And he, the rich man, and he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no more longer steward. So basically he's saying, hey, I've heard you're uh, wasting my money and my goods. So I want you to give me an accounting of what you're doing. Otherwise, I'm going to kick you out of here. Verse 3. Then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. So the owner is going to kick me out from being the business manager. I cannot dig. You know, he can't dig trenches. So, uh, you know, I guess he was a slight man. To beg, I am ashamed. Ain't too proud, ain't too, br ain't too pow proud to beg. I think that was a TLC song, right? I'm too proud to beg. Verse 4. I am resolved what to do. Oh, I know what to do. When I am put out of the stewardship, that they may receive me into their houses. Verse 5. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him. So everybody that owed the business money basically he called them all in and said unto the first how much owest thou unto my lord and he said a hundred measures of oil and he said unto him take thy bill and sit down quickly and write 50 so he owes a hundred but he's only going to have to pay for 50 Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write four score. So he owed a hundred, but he's only going to have to pay for eighty. Verse eight. And the Lord, the owner of the business, basically, and the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. So what's he saying here? Well, the Lord, the business owner, is saying, hey, that was pretty smart of you. You know, because the uh, the people that do evil are smarter to do evil than the children of light. Because the children of light are too stinking trusting. Verse 9. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon, 
or money, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. See, this guy's thinking, okay, well, you know, uh, when the business owner or the Lord puts me out, all those people that I did favors for, I'm going to call in those favors. The guy that only had to pay 50 when he owed 100, well, he's going to put me up for a while or whatever. Feed me, put me up, whatever. However, read what it says here. And I say to you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon, or money or greed, of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, that they may receive you into everlasting habitations. See, their money was greed. I mean, their, their God was greed and money. And what is the everlasting habitation? Is it not hell? You know, they're not the children of light. They're the children of this world. But for the children of... Well, let's read verse 8 again. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser to do evil? For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. I'm thinking that's probably hell. Verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. So those that are faithful in the little things are most certainly going to be faithful with the big things. And those that are unfaithful in the small things are going to be unfaithful in the big things also. Everything. Verse 11. If therefore ye have not been faithful, if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? So if you're not faithful of the things of this world, who's going to, you know, is the Lord going to come up, uh, trust you to commit to your trust the things of the Lord, the eternal life, heaven? Verse 12. And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? You know, that's a thing. If, if, you know, if somebody sees you that you're not faithful with somebody else's stuff, why would they trust you to be faithful with your own stuff? You know, or why would they give you, why would they give you something important? You know, you want to give, if you're going to give somebody a gift, you want to give it to somebody that's deserving of it. Verse 13. No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon, or greed and money. Now, Jesus is talking about, you know, the Lord here, and I'm comparing it to a businessman. Suppose 
we put in a spiritual application to this instead of being an earthly business. How about the Lord's house? If they're not faithful with the things of the Lord's and they're making friends of greed and money and mammon instead of being faithful to the Lord's things, you know, why would the Lord give them eternal life when he can't even trust them with the things of this world? I hope that makes sense. So no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. You know, you can't love Satan and love God. You're either going to hate God and love Satan, or you're going to hate Satan and love God. No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, they were greedy, heard all these things, and they derided him. See, the Pharisees were, uh, remember what Jesus did in the temple? He made a whip of a scourge, a scourge of a whip of scourge and scourged them. He made a whip of cords and whipped them and overthrew their tables, the money changers. Why? Because they were cheating people. That is exactly what they were doing. They were cheating people, all in the name of the Lord. They were greedy. The Lord couldn't trust them in the little things, and he can't trust him in the big things either. And the Pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things, and they derided him. And he, Jesus, and he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. You know those guys that got the title of doctor but before their name? Oh, I'm Reverend Dr. Uh, Billy Goat Graham or whatever. Yeah. Those things that are highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John, since that time... The kingdom of God is preached, and every man pressed into it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than for one tittle of the law to fail. So, I hope that uh, helps. Honestly, I think um, there was the heavenly application there about the unjust steward. I think he was referring to the Pharisees who were doing stuff around the temple. You know, they claimed they were serving the Lord, but instead they were serving themselves. And instead of having people give the things to the Lord that they owed, they weren't doing it. Maybe people were giving the tithes and uh, instead of, you know, maybe they were keeping half the tithes instead of doing what was right. I'm not sure exactly, but I don't know. I hope that made sense. Um, all right, well, all glory to Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.